Might there be some additions to the BYU coaching staff coming in the relatively near future? We'll try to explain that on today's show via two different reports that we have out there. We'll also talk with Preston Hadley, BYU defensive ends coach, a guy whose position group is hard-pressed to improve this season, wants to prove themselves. He explains how they will do that ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, my friends? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making us here on Locked On Cougars, your first listen of the day. We are proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto around the network is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. A uh, big thank you for joining us once again. Our goal here simply stated, my goal as your host is to make you the smartest BYU fans out there in Cougar Nation. So thank you for te- checking out the show. By way of introduction for any of you who may be checking us out for the very first time, my name's Jake. I work for the KSL Sports Zone in Salt Lake City, Utah, and Sports Radio. Working with DJ and PK on a daily basis, but in my off hours, I am your host here talking all things BYU. And that's where we're going to start on today's show with some BYU football notes. And something I've been trying to put together over the past week or so uh, goes back to actually my show last Friday with DJ and PK. And we have a lot of great guests, obviously, uh, the kind of the who's who of the state of Utah uh, media and even some national media, but we had the play-by-play voice for BYU, Greg Rebell, back on the show, and Greg is actually a, a longtime mentor of mine. He actually helped me get my start in radio. I was his intern, wow, 12 years ago now, this time of year, I started working with him, spent an entire year working under his tutelage, and got me on the track to doing what I do now, and I, I, I'm absolutely indebted to him, but that's kind of beside the point. He made a very interesting point to DJ and PK last week that I want to play some of the audio from that interview, because because it goes in line with some things that have been coming out this week, especially with regards to former Utah and Houston wide receiver Raylan Singleton being spotted at practice for BYU. So here's what Greg had to say last Friday. So this comes from a week ago almost, and this is before anybody knew that Raylan Singleton was on staff at BYU, and here you go. Whether or not it's a true one-for-one arrangement, for each assistant coach, PK, there's now an analyst. There are 10 analysts for 10 assistant coaches on this team right now and 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 that's more than double what the team was was dealing with a couple seasons ago so um you know stepping up in every way adding staff members to the front office and behind the scenes um uh, you know component to 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 back up these on-field assistant coaches is a huge part of what BYU is going to need to succeed and compete in in the big 12 because even just a few years ago you'd you look at the Alabama coaching roster, and everybody was dealing with the same number of on-field assistants, but it was how many yeah. behind-the-scenes staffers a team like Alabama had going. It, you know, they were kind of ahead of the curve in this, and teams are finally catching up to you know, kind of buttress that behind-the-scenes uh, aspect of the staff, and BYU's now joined that group. Uh, and it wasn't just in the analyst category. There was there was strength and conditioning and player experience uh, additions and a lot of things that make BYU look more like the kind of staff size you're going to see at the P5 level. Very interesting comments there from Gregor Bell. Like I said, last Friday, and PK later on in that interview indicated that Raylan Singleton had joined the BYU staff. I know some members of the Deseret News uh, essentially, quote-unquote, broke the news of that, but PK mentioned it on air on Friday that Raylan Singleton was on staff. I didn't know, and I have no reason to doubt Greg and him saying that for BYU staff, there are now 10 analysts for all 10 assistant coaches on the BYU coaching staff. Well, if you go to the BYU directory for their football program, as it currently stands, I I pulled it up right before I pushed record on this podcast, there are currently only three analysts listed. Uh, Vince Fayula, I think Al Papunu, and then one other one was listed there. I know that Jan Jorgensen is back at BYU in an analyst role. I would assume that Raylan Singleton is likely going to be one of those quote-unquote 10 analysts being added to the staff. Well, Kalani Satake was asked uh, during BYU Photo Day today, we had a chance to catch up with players and coaches down there at their annual photo day, to hear about Raylan Singleton, what he's doing with the program, and Kalani let a little bit uh, slip, I guess, in a way, of what might be coming down the pipe for BYU. Here you go. 
working with us, and he's working with, uh, he had a great uh, connection with uh, A-Rod, and so he's working with, with our receivers, and, and he's, you know, he's been there, he's been in the game, so I think it, it brings a unique perspective to it all, and, uh, and, and he, he's, he's knowledgeable, knows his stuff, so uh, I think that everybody that's here is here for a purpose and a reason, and I think the reason is to help our young men be the best versions of themselves on and off the field, and I think he can help that. So is he a volunteer coach? Yeah, I, as we go through the transition, it's going to be, we'll kind of iron some things out in the next couple of weeks. All I care is that he's in our locker room and, and with our guys. So things might be coming here in the relatively near future, and I'm going to assume that's going to be a press release saying that BYU is added to their football staff. And guys like Raylan Singleton, whether he might be a graduate assistant or officially an analyst, I think you're going to see an expanded staff announcement for the BYU football program. And that's awesome. Uh, frankly, that is awesome to hear that BYU is continuing to add staff. They did a lot this offseason, expanding their off-the-field staff. We talked about it on this podcast, uh, adding guys like Justin Anderson uh, to the recruiting side of things, uh, bringing in new equipment guys. They really expanded the staff a lot this offseason, and that goes back to the quote-unquote unprecedented contract that BYU gave Kalani Sitake and his assistant coaches. They rewarded all of them uh, to keep them in-house at BYU, and it sounds like they are not done expanding. This is what I have always wanted to see for the BYU football program. I'll be very frank. BYU has operated on a shoestring budget and with uh, just a, a skeleton crew of staffers for so so long. I, for one, cannot express how elated I am that they are continuing to expand this staff. So if everything, if, if these two things go together, if what Gregor Bell reported, the 10 analysts, and then what Kalani says that some things will be finalized here in the next few weeks, if those two things are uh, are to coincide, I would expect you're going to see an expanded staff announcement in the analyst role for BYU. I can tell you this much. There are a lot of different guys milling around at practice than I've ever seen before. They can't coach on the field as an analyst. Let me be very clear about that. It's actually against NCAA rules, and you can get yourself in trouble for that. But they can work behind the scenes, analyzing film, uh, sitting in meeting rooms, all that type of stuff. They can go out and watch practice, but they cannot officially be an on-the-field coach. They cannot uh, be coaching guys up on the football field. So... There is, I think, some more changes coming to the BYU football program and changes in a good way, meaning that the staff, you're going to see more bodies added to it. And that means BYU, they understand what they're up against as they jump into the Big 12 here, and they are trying to stay on par or at least on course with the rest of their new P5 mates in the Big 12 conference. Adding analysts is absolutely critical. You heard Greg talk about the fact that Alabama for so many years was out there and seemingly just had an endless supply of quote-unquote analysts. Most of them were former head coaches, it feels like, uh, going through the Nick Saban School for Reformed Fired Coaches. That's one of those jokes out there in the college football universe. But adding more and more bodies to this is a unique thing that BYU, I think, is doing right now that they've never done in their history. So, Expanding the staff, adding more players, coaches, former players, uh, coaches to this roster to help them really get this team playing as best it possibly can be. I cannot wait for this. The one other tidbit about this, some of you know this, some of you may not. The Morgan Scally incident with a racially charged word that he allegedly texted to a recruit mistakenly when he was trying to send it to a fellow uh, co-worker of his. Well, the athlete in question, it's Raylan Singleton. So that's kind of another little tidbit there is that the Morgan Scally story continues on in a way with Raylan Singleton. Uh, I'm hoping at some point we'll be able to talk to him as a media core. Maybe I can get him one on, with a one-on-one -on -one to talk about his new role at BYU. But some interesting stuff. Uh, that's the biggest thing. It sounds like he's got a good relationship with Aaron Roderick and looking forward to seeing guys like Raylan Singleton be a bigger part of this program moving forward. Because as I said, I am absolutely ecstatic that BYU has continued to expand this staff. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some math. I'm putting some, some pieces together, two and two together here, but I fully expect you'll see an announcement, or maybe they won't announce it. They'll just put it on the roster or the directory and just add those names, and we'll keep an eye on that. We'll see when and if that becomes official to guys like Raylan Singleton are officially added as analysts for the BYU football program, or if, as uh, Jay suggested, they might just simply be volunteer coaches. All right, coming up here in just a minute, you'll hear uh, part one of a two-part conversation with BYU defensive ends coach Preston Hadley, one of my favorite uh, coaches to interview, a guy that I think has done a really good job training transitioning to a position that he had never coached before. He'll explain what he expects from his defensive end unit, the defensive line as a whole, as they move forward here in fall camp, what they're trying to bounce back from from a really rough uh, end of the season last year in 2021. 
He'll talk more about that here in just a moment. First, though, a word on our friends over at Built Bar. If you've not tried the new Built Bar Puffs, my friends, you are missing out. You're depriving yourself of one of the life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a brand new flavor. That's right. Built has done it again. They've got a brand new flavor and cookie dough chunk puffs. And the best part about Built Bar, my friends, any of you who are BYU fans, you know that BYU has that name, image, and likeness agreement with the Built brand of companies. So when you support Built Bar and the new Built Puffs, you buy those, you're supporting BYU football in the process. The incredible part of about these puffs and the built bars themselves are the macros. For example, this cookie dough chunk puff, only 160 calories, but packs in a whopping 15 grams of protein. It's absolutely incredible. I can tell you this much having eaten it myself. It is absolutely delicious and to die for. So give it a shot, my friends. Go to built.com right now. Place your order. While you're there, use the promo code LOCKED15. That is L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. Excuse me. Locked 15, L O C K E D 1 5 for 15% off your order. Once again, support BYU football by supporting our friends at Built Bar. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show bright and early in the morning or late at night. Whenever you have a chance to fit it in, it means the world that you would take the time to check out this show. It's absolutely one of my favorite things to do. But time now to let you guys hear part one of a conversation I had with Preston Hadley. There were some other media members around. I believe uh, Kevin Reynolds from Salt Lake Tribune is one of them. I think he actually asked a a follow-up question in this portion of that. You'll hear him ask his follow-up. But some very interesting interesting comments from Preston Hadley. Like I said, part one of a two-part conversation. Let's get to it. Here you go, Preston Hadley. You guys run multiple fronts. I've seen three-man fronts, practical five-man fronts, the four-man front. Is, do you like the versatility? You can throw anything out there at these guys, and at this point, they should be up to speed on that, in your opinion? Yeah, I see a lot of value in it. Um, I think just being that multiple up front, um, I think it prepares a lot of guys for the next level, for whatever scheme they end up in. Those guys who get the opportunity to play at the next level or, or whatever level they end up after. Um, but I, I think the, just the, the versatility of it just allows us to just be not as predictable, I guess. Sorry. Um, and it, 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 a lot of it is just based on who we're playing that week. Like certain fronts, or whether it's a three down front, five down, four down, six down. You know, uh, a lot of it just depends on who we're playing that week, you know. And so if it's a team that creates multiple gaps at the line of scrimmage and has big physical tight ends, all right, we want to be in a front that's going to put us at an advantage to to, uh, to what they're trying to do. So I, I think it's just good to have, have those tools. Now, whether we use it week in and week out, you know, that's that's up to the coordinator and just the D staff as we, as we scheme. But um, as far as um, knowing it all, like, I, I see a lot of value in it for those reasons. Can I ask you what the difference you have? Because you, you have three different defensive end spots on your your depth chart. There's a strong end, the regular defensive end. There's the opposite end. Can you explain the difference between the three? Yeah. So we have a strong end, big end, and big the end. Okay. the OE okay. is what we call it for outside end. So um, the OE, he's. I mean, they're all essentially they're all doing the same thing. Um, the OE, there are certain calls where the OE might drop in coverage. Um, we might insert him as a as a fourth rusher from somewhere else, you know, whether it's at backer level or from the edge. Um, the big end is out of our out of our strong personnel group, where he's actually playing to the field, right? And usually we like to have him. I mean, it just depends on the scheme, but um, it's it's usually a lot of our big ends like Earl, John Nelson, those guys can also play defensive tackle. Um, Batty can play the, de- the the big end as well, and then strong end is honestly the same thing. So we just like to confuse you guys and call it big end, strong end, OE, whatever we feel like calling it. You have a lot of guys on this roster that are like third, fourth, up to sixth year guys in the program. Do you feel like this is a really old but still something to prove group? Like individually, each of them haven't necessarily had that one year to break out yet, even though um, they've been here for a while? I think we have a lot to prove. I mean, still got some bad taste in our mouth from last year. And just there are some games where we didn't do a good enough job stopping the run. You know, and I mean, usually, you know, when a team gashes in the run, you know, everyone wants to point at the D line first, and we look at ourselves first. You know, there there might be other other factors that are are included there, but yeah, I mean, we we have a lot to prove. I I think just, and all the guys know, we we weren't good enough last year up front. There was times when we did a good job, but consistently, uh, we need to be better. And I I like the the trajectory that we're on, um, at the tackle and the D end spot, and I think with all the experience, you know, I think with from the COVID year to just the heavy rotation of guys that we have last year. I mean, we have a lot of really good players that might be a three right now, but they could easily, I mean, 
we feel good about him being in the starting rotation. You know, so a lot, lot to prove still, though. There you go, Preston Hadley, part one of our conversation. We'll talk more personnel notes here uh, on our, probably tomorrow's podcast. Uh, we'll get to those. He talks a little more about Tyler Batty, but you heard him mention guys like Earl Tuioti Mariner and John Nelson are going to be playing some defensive end. John Nelson is a guy I expected to play defensive tackle this year, but if he's going to play that strong end, as, he, as you heard him talk about, uh, that's actually not a bad place for him to be because he probably would be a little bit of an undersized defensive tackle for BYU. I think he's weighing into the 280, 290 pound range. So maybe you play him at that strong end position, which is more of a glorified defensive tackle, if we're being honest. If you're looking at kind of a 3-4 alignment, they play that 5 technique, which is heads up on the offensive tackle, and there are 300 pounders that play that position from time to time at various programs. So I, I like the way they're going about this, but I also really liked what uh, Coach Hadley had to say with regards to just the motivation for this team. They know that they struggled last year. They heard all of us out there on social media bemoaning their performance on the football field, speaking of the defensive line as a whole. Defensive ends, obviously, you want to see an increase in sacks, just overall disruption of the opposing pocket. Uh, it, it's so many things that go into this, and I think Preston Hadley, you can tell, it got to him, but at the same time, he understands that some of the criticism was warranted. He says that he expects them to improve. They have to improve this season, and we'll uh, talk more about that in our second part with him, uh, probably on tomorrow's podcast, like I said. Uh, so, very interesting stuff all the same, and a big thank you to uh, Coach Hadley for taking the time. And uh, if you saw a little cameo from my finger early on in that video, apologies for that. I was holding my camera and realized uh, later, about halfway through the video, as you might notice, oh, my finger might be covering up part of this. So, we still didn't obscure too much of the picture. You're still able, still able to see uh, Coach Hadley's uh, lovely face, and a big thank you to him once again for taking the time. I, I, by the way, one other note I probably should pass along on that. I think this defensive ends unit, they they understand what's at stake this season. I think the entire defensive line does, and they know that they are under the gun. They have BYU fans, media, even their coaches, probably some of the administrators of BYU. They know that they struggled last year. I don't think they need much more motivation to go into this season and go out there and play with their hair on fire and just absolutely get after it. I, I'd love for them to go out there and shut out all of us critics up and just say, you know what, we're tired of you guys saying that we're, we're the weak link, that we can't stop the run, blah, 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 blah. We can't get sacks. We can't make game-changing plays. I'd love for them to buck that uh, narrative and completely flip it on its head this year. Only time will tell. they got to get out on the football field and take on USF to begin the season, obviously, and take it one game at a time. But I'm hopeful that the noise around them has got them properly motivated. They can go out and really show the world that, hey, we're not as bad as y'all think we are. That, that would be a really, really nice development, if I'm being honest uh, with you guys, about what I'd like to see from this BYU defensive ends unit and just the defensive line as a whole. I know that Coach Tuiaki uh, coaches up the nose tackle and defensive tackle posi- positions for BYU, but the defensive ends, they're just as critical in BYU's defense. They, As you heard Coach Hadley say, they can play a four, a five, a six, a three-man front, and they can throw any of those out there at any time. And the versatility of that, in theory, should give them different opportunities to impact different games different ways. So the proof will be in the pudding. It's, you got to wait until the games really get here. But I, for one, I, I've been really down on the defensive line. I was really down on them last season. Any of you who have listened to this podcast for a long time, I'd love nothing more than to be proven wrong by this unit uh, this year, and we'll see where it all shakes out in the end. All right, coming up here in just a minute, a little bit of a shorter edition of the podcast today, but wanted to get to some BYU women's soccer notes. They had their annual alumni game last night. We'll get you an update on how that went. We'll also talk about where they have been picked in the preseason WCC poll as their season officially gets underway this weekend down there at in North Carolina against the UNC Tar Heels. We'll get to all of that as we continue on right here on Locked On Cougars. All right, before we go on today's show, uh, as I mentioned, women's soccer was in action last night holding their annual... uh what do they call it? Their alumni game. So they have players from uh, years past come back and play against the current team for BYU. I'll tell you this much. The alumni team this year, whew, they got worked. Final, BYU soccer, the number three ranked Cougars, nine. The alumni team, zero. Talk about a boat race. Bella Foligno got the scoring start in the fourth minute, uh, and then they had uh, uh, tallies in the fourth, fifth, ninth, fifteenth, 
47th, 65th, 78th, 78th, and 86th minutes. Bella Felina led the way with a hat trick uh, in for her uh, performance at her forward spot. So congratulations to her. This woman's soccer program, my friends, they lost some pieces from last year's national championship run, but they return a lot as well. And as such, the BYU women's soccer program is the preseason uh, pick to win the West Coast Conference Tournament. Uh, number five ranked Santa Clara is just behind BYU. They had 72 overall points to BYU's 80 points. Cougars got 80. Eight first place votes to Santa Clara's two. Number 17, Pepperdine, uh, comes in third. So there are three ranked programs for BYU in the West Coast Conference this year. And Gonzaga is probably just on the outside really looking in. They've been a very, very proud program for many, many years. A nationally ranked, a nationally prominent program. So it wouldn't be all that surprising to see Gonzaga enter the rankings at some point this year. The preseason All-WCC team was announced as well. Uh, BYU led the way with three players named to that. BYU captain Jamie Shepard, who plays in the midfield, as well as uh, defenders Olivia Smith and Laveni Vaca were named to that team. I was a bit surprised that Bella Felino was not named to the team, but congratulations to Jamie Shepard, uh, Olivia Smith, and Laveni Vaca for BYU. The spine, as some people say in soccer for the BYU women's soccer program, it's very, very strong. This this is a program. They have got a lot of pride. They've got a lot of talent still returning to this squad this year. And they made that run to the national championship last year. They, they've got to be believing right now. We can do that again. And maybe this is the year we finally break through and get Jennifer Rockwood that elusive national championship. There's not very many things that Coach Rockwood has not accomplished in her time at the helm of the BYU women's soccer program. Uh, for comparison's sake, folks, comparison's sakes, my friends, the biggest thing is uh, Coach Rockwood is like the Lavelle of the women's soccer program at BYU. I know Lavelle came into a program that had not been very good for 50-plus years. By the way, uh, this year is the 50-year anniversary of Lavelle taking over as the BYU uh, football head coach. Uh, well, Coach Rockwood, I think she in her 26th, 27th years. She's the only head coach, if I'm not mistaken, at the Division One level for BYU as a varsity program. So she has built this program into what it is. And the one thing that is just kind of missing from her resume and it doesn't necessarily get to make or break her resume, but having a national title, what a thing that would be. And to start out as the number three ranked team in the country, that's a sign of respect for BYU, especially coming off that national title run a year ago. So we'll see how things shake out, but some high praise for BYU. And if the alumni game is anything to uh, pay attention to, they're pretty, they're rolling right now. Uh, I know it's the alumni team. They're not necessarily probably in peak physical condition as they maybe they were when they were suiting up for the Cougars, but putting nine goals past them, that's pretty darn impressive. So congratulations to the women's soccer program. They will open up their season officially in an exhibition this weekend against the UNC Tar Heels. It's the first time BYU and UNC have met in the regular season, if I'm not mistaken. They have played in the postseason, I believe, but they have never played in the regular season. And it'll be an exhibition match officially. Officially, so it's not an official match, but still all the same. A big start, a, a big name to start your season for the women's soccer program. All right, that's going to do it for today's edition of the program. A big thank you for your guys' support as always. Uh, by the way, I want to encourage you guys, make sure you follow the show on social media. Check us out, Locked On Cougars on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. It's wherever the, it's where the show really doesn't stop. We're posting stuff all the time over there, making sure you're up to date on everything going on with the Cougars. You can follow me as well on Twitter. I'm at Jacob C. Hatch. You can see that right below here on the YouTube if you're watching this. And by the way, Subscribe on YouTube, uh, follow wherever you're listening on your podcast. Your guys' support is what makes this go round. This it makes our success. It's all on you guys, the listeners. So a big thank you for your support as always. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Want to encourage you guys now to go make your second listen. Our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast. Josh Neighbors is the host over there, making sure you're up to speed on everything you need to know about the Big 12 conference. Get that free and available wherever you get your podcast. That's going to do it for us. Have a great rest of your day whenever you hear this. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast, and we will talk to you guys tomorrow. See ya.